How much does it cost to start an Airbnb? As a host that's been doing this for about four years now, I've had the opportunity to set up between 25 to 30 different Airbnbs. And unfortunately for you, the answer to that question is, it depends. But I do get asked this quite a bit, especially from all my different host camp students. So I wanted to put together a video that sort of breaks down the cost to start an Airbnb from start to finish. Now actually, and you wanna stick around it, and you're gonna wanna stick around, huh, I'm in my head. And it's hot and I can't turn on the AC because it makes too much noise, so. Bear with my folks, bear with me 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 folks. Two hours later. You're probably gonna wanna stick around to the very end because I'm actually gonna break down what it costs to buy a property, furnish it, all the legal fees, everything like that. So let's talk about the actual costs here. And I wanted to walk you through the spending curve that most Airbnb hosts slash entrepreneur slash operators go through. I know Caleb right now is probably like, please don't make me animate this, please don't make me animate this, please don't make me animate this. Well, pal, I'm not gonna make you do that. Just kidding. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Cut to the graphic. So when you're first getting started in Airbnb, uh, I'll call this phase one, you're cheap, you're cheap, you're scrappy and you're wanting to save as much money as humanly possible when starting your first Airbnb because you're not really sure if this is gonna work out and so you don't wanna take too many risks, you just kinda wanna test the waters out. So you're going to Facebook Marketplace, you're going to Craigslist, you're going to let go, you're, you're getting furniture off the side of the road like I was whenever I was first starting my Airbnb business. And then stage two here, I call this like the bravery stage and this is where your first couple of units are going pretty well, you're cash flowing, so you're like, I'm gonna get bougie, I'm gonna get fancy, I'm gonna go a little extra with the throw pillows and you kind of blow your whole wad on this next unit and now you're out of money because you've spent all your money on this unit and you're like oh boy what have I done which then leads you to stage three which is basically being cheap again because you're overcorrecting for having splurged on the unit before that until finally you move to stage four which I call convenience and you spend a lot more money than you ever have before because you've realized that being cheap actually costs you a lot more money in the long run and spending a lot more money on automation and convenience makes your life so much easier. Now this isn't really an official graph or anything like that. This is just like my specific experience. I've gone the cheap route. I really splurged. I overcorrected, went back to being cheap. And now I'm like completely on the far side of it. And I'll probably spend way more money than the typical host on. What, is, this, is, it, is that Godzilla? Say hi. Can you say hi right here? Can you look right there and say hi? All right. Can you go back to mom now? Bye Godzilla. Now at this point, I probably spend a lot more money than I should be in certain departments than the typical host because I really just don't like to be bothered in the middle of dinner or when I'm putting my daughter down for a nap or anything like that. So what I mean by this is I'll just buy a whole bunch of sheets, for example, like if a sheet is stained, then I'll have a closet full of sheets. If a remote isn't working, then I have like 200 batteries in stock just because the more redundant you are on these different backup systems, the less time it's gonna cost you because as I've talked about many times on the channel, time is money. So I'm not gonna belabor this point too much because I talk about why being cheap costs you a lot of money in my furnishing video. Which speaking of, if you want a copy of my shopping list, I'll leave a link in the description down below. I really think that my shopping list is pretty budget friendly for any Airbnb host. So let's get into the nitty gritty here. I wanted to break down what I consider a pretty middle of the road deal for me and kind of analyze what it would cost you to buy a $400,000 house. Take it or leave it, but I think that this is a pretty average price point for most people looking to get into the game. You can plug and play my formula here for a 200, 300, 400, 5, 6, 7, 800,000 dollar house. It's all relative. Now, we'll say that my POV for me personally, I'm not going to be acquiring properties that are less than 500,000 dollars these days, and that's for a whole variety of reasons, but typically I'm looking to acquire an Airbnb that's in a really great location or has high bed bath count. So for the most part, I'm looking for Airbnbs these days that have at least four bedrooms, but now I'm even narrowing my own criteria here to five bedrooms or more because the more rooms, the more people you're able to sleep, the more people you're able to sleep, the more money you can charge. And so for me, I'm just always chasing higher returns. But with that said, there's no real right or wrong here. Ultimately, it's gonna come down to what you're comfortable with budgetarily. So that's why I wanna start with $400,000 here because I think that's an achievable price range in many parts of the country. All right, well, if you haven't noticed yet, <laughs> I'm not in my typical studio because I'm back in California now and all my stuff is in storage. So just jumping out here really quick because the lighting is way better. You're probably gonna hear like 18,000 dogs barking in like cars every five seconds because it's LA. Oh, dude. 
tubular. So let's look at this deal as a home per airplane, birds, German Shepherds, ADHD just on fire. So let's examine this deal as a home purchase and let's talk through the two main loan types that you're gonna come across. So there's what's called the second home loan, also known as a vacation rental loan. This only requires 10% down. It also requires that you stay at the property for a portion of the year. So if you wanted to buy a home but you couldn't justify the yearly expense of a mortgage because you're only there for part of the year, you can list it on Airbnb and not only subsidize the mortgage but of course make money. Now obviously I'm not a mortgage broker so talk to your mortgage broker about the difference to stipulations and everything like that, but that's gonna be one of your main types of loans to acquire a short-term rental, 10% down in that instance. On the flip side of this, you can do an investment loan. This is typically a commercial product and it's gonna require anywhere from 15 to 20% down. 20% down is definitely the more common of the two, but right now the loan that I'm personally working with is a 15% down. But for simplicity's sake, we're gonna say 10% for a second home loan and we're gonna say 20% for an investment loan. So assuming you buy a $400,000 property, your down payment with the second home vacation home loan is gonna be about $40,000. Now, if you want the 20% investment loan route, that would be $80,000. And if you use a 15% down investment loan, then that would be $60,000. I guess I could have done that in order in retrospect, but we've come too far to do that now. So your startup cost, just from a down payment perspective, is gonna cost you anywhere from forty dollars to $80,000 on a $400,000 house. So let's jump into my handy dandy spreadsheet here. Before you ask, yes, it is available for download. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And let's just start inputting some of these metrics that we were talking about. So the cost of the house, let's put it as $400,000 and down payment, let's just say we're gonna do a second home loan on that. So our down payment is gonna automatically adjust to $40,000. Now your next set of fees here are gonna be your closing costs. A lot of lenders will do a 1% origination fee, but I have seen it up to 2%. And then you have your escrow and prepayment fee. So this is gonna be if you pay your taxes up front, your property insurance up front and all that jazz. So typically for me to like estimate this a little bit more accurately, I'm usually putting that at a 3%. Then we're gonna get into remodel. Now usually I allot like $10,000 minimum per property just because I know that there's gonna be stuff that I wanna do like paint walls, maybe I wanna rip out carpet, maybe I wanna do new granite countertops. Perfect world though, we spend less than $1,000 because I'm usually these days looking for something a little bit more turnkey. Now when you're getting started out, I would definitely recommend to find something that does need a little bit more work where you can add value because you're just getting started. You need to start building equity as soon as you possibly can because you're starting out and every little bit helps. Me, I've got 14 different properties. I make about $25,000 of Airbnb profit every single month. So I've earned the luxury of not having to grind quite as hard as I did when I was first starting out. Then you'll see here I've got what's called a setup fee. Your setup fees are gonna be a couple of things. This is gonna be your flights to get to the property, rental cars, U-Hauls, food, and this is gonna be all your costs associated with going to your Airbnb for a week or two to set it up. And obviously it can start to get up there if you go with your spouse or your business partner. So for me, I'm generally allotting $3,000 at a minimum, and that is if the property is within eight hours away from where I live. If the property is on a completely different coast, for example, like if I'm in California and I'm buying a place in Destin, Florida, which I currently am, then I would bump that setup fee to about $5,000. And another thing to keep in mind is whenever you're connecting your utilities, you're gonna have different deposits associated with that too. So if I'm looking at a $3,000 setup fee for flights, food, lodging, like all that type of stuff, I would probably allot like another 500 bucks for utility deposits. So we'll go ahead and shift this here to 3,500 bucks. And then furnishings are really gonna be the big kicker. I'm typically allotting $10 a square foot at a minimum. That's usually the price point that I advise people to start with. Well, no, not advice. None of this is advice. Not a lawyer, not a mortgage broker, not an advisor of any sorts. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my friend. He's a little slow. <laughs> Anyway, $10 a square foot is usually what I advise my host camp students to start with. Obviously, if you wanna go a little bit more premium like I'm going these days, I can pretty easily spend from 12 to $15 a square foot. I've even spent up to $20 a square foot. So on a mid-range deal here, $400,000, let's say that it's about 2,000 square feet times $10 a square foot, that would cost you roughly $20,000 to furnish. Now again, if you wanna stay as close to that $10 a square foot metric I gave you, I'm gonna leave my shopping list down below, which I really do think it's pretty budget friendly for anyone starting out. And final thing to keep in mind here will be your legal fees. This will be if you want your attorney to assist you with forming an LLC and transferring your property into the LLC and all that kind of stuff. After doing this several times, this typically comes out to no more than 1500 bucks. Come on cars. Come on cars. 
So you can see here, if we were gonna buy a house for $400,000 after all of our different costs and setup fees and closing costs, down payments, remodel, all that kind of stuff, the cost to start an Airbnb with a vacation home, second home loan would be about $78,000. Now let's walk this up a little bit if you wanted to do an investment loan. So for me, I'm getting 15% investment loans right now. So that's gonna change the down payment to $60,000 like I mentioned earlier. It's gonna cost me $98,000 in this specific instance to start an Airbnb. Now, if we wanted to go full investment loan, which is a lot more expensive and not something I really wanna do, then it's gonna cost me $118,000 to start this, you know, faux Airbnb. And again, if you want my little house buy calculator here, it's free, I'll leave a link for you down below. So, as the sun sets and I lose all light, um, I guess we'll wrap this up. How much is too much to spend on an Airbnb? Well, Sadly, that is a pretty relative question. See, I don't really mind spending $500,000 or a million dollars or $1.5 million, which I'm currently doing on a house in Destin, and it's by far the most expensive Airbnb I've ever purchased, because to me, it ultimately comes down to what the return is. See, ultimately, I'm measuring the success of my short-term rental based on a metric called cash on cash return. I was gonna spitball what this was, because I do know what it is, and I don't want the sharks coming after me in the comments, so a cash on cash return is the rate of return often used in real estate transactions that calculates the cash cash income earned on the cash invested in a property. So this means that if you invested $100,000 into your property, oh, farts, come on, don't do this to me right now. There we go. All right, smart techno. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna finish the video. I'm gonna finish the video like this. I don't care. I'm gonna, let me re white balance this. This is real guys. This is, this is real life right here. It's so, bad that it won't even let me set the, <laughs> the white balance. All right, I don't know why balance it is. So this means that if there's an airplane in the sky and a very bright light in your space and you invest $100,000 into a property and in that first property, your cash flow and your profit was $50,000, you would divide that 50,000 by 100,000. Your cash on cash return, can you even see this? Would be 0.5, a 50% cash on cash return, which is very, very good. Now my bare minimum is 20%. Like I will not look at a deal that is under a 20% cash on cash return which is about two times the amount that you would get on a long-term rental or anything in the stock market on a normal year. So for me, a 20% is like my bare minimum, but typically I am looking for deals that are 40, 50, 60, 70%, ideally 50 to 75%. Obviously anything more than that would be great too. That's tougher to find these days. But the reason I'm usually looking for a 50% minimum is because when I'm working with investors and I'm splitting those profits and that cash flow with them, and I need them to have a minimum of a 20%. But there's some other costs associated with those different deals. Like I charge a 7% management fee. So after all fees and everything like that, I really need the cash on cash for me personally to be a 50%. Now, with that said, I hate, I still hate the way I look right now. Dad, Melanie, I can't even hear you. It's just noise coming out of an ugly scientist. Oh, so frustrating. So for you, it's really gonna come down to your preference, your investment style. For some people, a 15% return is amazing. I mean, it is like when you compare it to all other investment types, a 15% is still an absolute win. But when I'm teaching and I'm working with students, I really do want people to hit as close to that 20% minimum as possible. So my philosophy these days is I spend more. It's usually gonna equate to a higher return. And the thing that I'm really thankful about with my short-term rental journey is that things are going so well for me and I've got such a well-diversified portfolio that pays out pretty well. I can spend more and take way bigger risks than I used to when I was first starting out. For example, I'm buying a place in Destin, Florida for $1.4 million. I know I said 1.5 earlier, but I am doing some remodeling. I'm gonna be spending a lot of money on the furniture. That's really scary, even for me. I mean, I know what I'm doing. I'm an expert, but $1.4 million is like, you know, even for someone at my level, it's like a scary investment. However, after running all my analysis and my comps and everything like that, at a minimum, it should gross 200 to $220,000. After I'm done with it and fixing it up and doing all the different things that I wanna do in that Airbnb, I'm hoping to be closer to $300,000 of gross revenue every single year. And that, friends, is life-changing money. One final thing that I forgot to mention earlier was my photography cost. I typically spend between three to $500 on that. I just lump that into my furnishing budget or my setup cost. I don't have my own line item for that, but just keep that in mind. But that's it. That's how much it costs to start an Airbnb. Adjust accordingly, use my spreadsheet, calculate what it would cost to start a 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 thousand dollar plus Airbnb and make the numbers work for you. Run your numbers, run them again, and really ask yourself if it's something you can afford. The last thing I want is for you to get into an investment that you can't afford. So with that, I guess, uh, I guess that's it. If you're interested in learning more about Host Camp, I'll leave a link down in the description below for you. Catch you on the next episode of Raw Build.